Lita O'Halloran, the other side of the screen, is a biologist studying water quality in New Brunswick for the Passamaquoddy Nation. Welcome, Lita. Hi, how are you? Well, I'm very well, thanks. Um, you know, when I lived in New Brunswick, and even after I have uh, ceased to live in New Brunswick, I always think of it as a pristine area, salmon fishing, what have you. What is the top of mind findings that you can share with us about water quality in the region? Right, so we uh, only look at water quality within the Canadian side of the Passamaquoddy territory, at least I do. Uh, there is work being done on the US side of the territory as well. Uh, which uh, usually we like to refer to the east side and west side of the river rather than the border because to the Passamaquoddy there is no border. Uh, but on this side, uh, you know, we've been looking at water quality for just over a year now. Um, and what we found so far through those is that most of the watersheds we're looking at are in fair condition. So, you know, they're not horrible, but there's always room for improvement. And what is the um, cause of the rating only being fair? What are the uh, pollutants or the impediments or what is the state of the uh, waterways that gives you some concern? Right, so we're looking at uh, just some basic water quality parameters. Uh, we're not focused specific on any pollutants. Uh, we look at baseline uh, physical parameters in regards to fish habitat. Um, so some of those include temperature, dissolved oxygen, conductivity, uh, salinity, and pH, and a couple others. Um, so from those, that FAIR rating comes from uh, an index, which is used by Canadian standards for um, the uh, health of aquatic life. Um, so this is provided by a Canadian guideline. Now, why in a waterway, which I guess means river or stream or uh, pond, why would the oxygen levels and other elements that you mentioned be of concern? I mean, nature knows best, doesn't it? And if that's the oxygen level, isn't that, aren't them the breaks? <laughs> yeah, so in regards to why it's important is, um, in especially regards to fish and fish habitat um, is, especially for spawning and other factors. Um, things like eggs require certain um, conditions within the river to be able to hatch. Um, even just livelihoods outside of spawning, such as salmon are very sensitive species to different ranges in temperature and pH. So how these parameters are in the environment affects where the fish are and their survival to a good extent. Um, and some of what we're finding is natural, but some of it can be influenced by human behavior. Um, so things like um, dams obviously will reduce uh, circulation of water and reduce circulation reduces oxygen. Um, and things like um, uh, farm fields and other sources that are putting um, nitrogen and fertilizers into the water will then affect pH, total dissolved solids and, and other parameters. So there's some relationships between those that we can infer. Well, fair enough. Now I know what we humans are doing wrong. Um, I, I think the fish are blameless, but uh, you're the biologist, you'd know best. Um, it, it seems to me that a lay person would think, well, isn't a dam great? It creates this big reservoir place for fish to swim around, but of course it also blocks the river and prevents their getting to their natural habitat. And uh, I think, as you just said, the deeper water makes it, uh, changes the temperature so it's not as hospitable. Have I got that about right? Uh, not necessarily uh, in terms of depth of water. I mean, um, when you're creating deeper waters, there's different levels of oxygen at the surface versus uh, the, the deeper part of the water, same with temperature. Um, so it doesn't necessarily make it less hospitable, but it definitely changes and alters the natural state. Is there any good coming of the changing of the natural state? You know, uh, it's an ill wind that blows no good, they say. Um, global warming or the warming of water temperature would surely be more hospitable to some species or increase a season or what have you. Is it all bad when, when things change or sometimes do they change for the better? Um, this is a large, large loaded question. Um, you know, obviously, like you said, as the water levels or temperatures change, that could 
uh, bring other species into the Bay of Fundy and into the Passamaquoddy Bay, um, which could be beneficial. There'd be longer growing seasons, so potentially larger fish, but that can also introduce invasive species, a species that are not native to the area might now have access uh, to the waters and outcompete our native species. So there, there's good and bad. Now, I'd like to follow on on, on what we humans can do. Um, I've um, operated a, a plow and a baler and a rake and what have you on farms. And if I were near a water course, I would uh, take your information and say, well, I'm, I'm going to spread fertilizer a little farther away from that water course, or maybe not plow as close to it so there wouldn't be as much runoff. Uh, beyond that, I don't have much expertise. But what is it that uh, people with camps or with farms or who enjoy the outdoors, uh, what can we do to make your next uh, examination, maybe next summer, a, a little more positive? Yeah, so one of the larger things I think that any landowner can do um, is just ensure that there's a good riparian zone around the water. And so what that means is um, the amount of habitat that isn't plowed or removed uh, close to the waterway. So in typical, I think New Brunswick recommends 15 to 30 meters from any river um, to keep plant and vegetative life. Uh, this allows the banks to be stabilized, so you're not having sediment flowing into the river. Um, it also provides shade for the water, so that, you know, decreases the high temperatures in the summer. Um, and a lot of the times when you have trees and grasses and things, some of that will fall into the waterways naturally, and that actually provides food for invertebrates, which then help fish. So, you know, having that input from vegetative life from the land-based ecosystem definitely helps the aquatic-based ecosystem. Any uh, public uh, funding uh, to do something that is more environmentally sound but more expensive? Right, there's likely um, some sources out there. Uh, currently, our funding for this project comes from the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. Um, so they fund our work, um, but yeah, I'm sure there are things out there for public to support, uh, just none come to mind. Now you've mentioned uh, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, so uh, you know tip of the hat to them for helping to fund this. But I think you have some other either partners or funders or supporters in universities and organizations elsewhere. Would you would you like to acknowledge them? Yeah, absolutely. So we work with um, you know the other uh, communities from the Passamaquoddy, so the Sabai Environmental Department and Indian Township. We work with them. Uh, we collaborate some of our work. Um, we do are, are starting to work with the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure um, on some of these. Um, we also work with the Atlantic Salmon Federation in some capacity, looking at some of the waterways in regards to salmon habitat. Uh, we work, we've just started working with the Quad uh, New Brunswick group. So it's an ATV group on uh, improving passage and uh, erosion on their trails. So yeah, there are uh, quite a few project partners, um, St. Croix International Waterway Commission, the Eastern Charlotte Waterways and uh, Conservation Council of New Brunswick are some of the other ones we work with as well. Well, great work. And uh, I have to confess that if uh, you and I had bumped into each other at, uh, I forget the name of the uh, brew pub, but the old train station in St. Stephen or on the balcony of the Algonquin Hotel, um, I n wouldn't be sure what uh, kind of a conversation I should strike up because I don't talk to very many biologists. So no doubt I have missed asking you an important question or uh, getting you to talk about an important uh, aspect of, of your research. Uh, what did I miss? <laughs> well, we're, we're actually doing a whole lot. Uh, I mean, one water quality is a very small portion of what we do. Um, our overarching goal is looking at returning uh, sea run fish to the territory. That's our overarching goal. And, uh, you know, that has a lot of um, information gathering, a lot of restoration, a lot of different pieces brought in to, to do that. Um, so we look at water quality as a physio physiochemical barrier. Uh, we look at culverts and bridges and dams as a passage barrier. We look at the presence and abundance of fish in all of the rivers and throughout the watersheds to see what is there to restore and how that's changing as we're doing restoration. Um, we do restoration itself to improve and restore them. 
and a little bit of outreach as well. So there's a lot of components moving and working together all at the same time. So this is so the fish can get back to their natural spawning areas and make more fish and bigger fish and, and, and enjoy their natural habitat. Yep, absolutely. Interesting.